up, y'all? It's your girl, Kashana, and guess what? Today on A Kiss Goodnight, I have in the house my bestest friend in the whole world, business partner, all the things, educator extraordinaire. I mean, like, there's so many titles for you, Ashwa. I will take all of them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, y'all. So, Ashwa Helton, this is my boo thing. And so, I figured that I would let y'all in on a topic that we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. We talk about a lot of topics all the time, y'all. So you just need to go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. Forward this to a friend before we even start because you are not going to want to miss any juicy episode that we've got coming your way. But today, so you know I'm dating now, okay? Back in the scene. Back, <sighs> the dating pins are imminent. Let's the go. The dating pins are imminent. So I feel like since I got divorced, gosh, over a decade ago, mm -hmm. I have been in and out of the whole, like, dating situation. And you're taking a break from dating right now. That's correct. But we've been in the streets together. Yes, we have. Y'all, why y'all have us in the streets? I just... I mean, for so long. Why so long? Why y'all have us in the streets? Mm -hmm. I, I, I was just trying to get chose. <laughs> so in the first That's couple true. of years, I was on a mission to, like, get married again. Because my mama, y'all, she's here today. I just want you to know. My mama was like, you just need a nice man. A nice man. <laughs> <laughs> Right around the corner. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. To take care of me. Yeah, to take care of me, right? Okay. So that was the quest. But we, we fast found that there are some differences in what I think I want and what's available. And also what the gentlemen are kind of socialized to be thinking about that they value and what they actually really enjoy. And so it ends up to be like a dichotomy and a tension that you live through, that I live through, that men live through, and it, it's hard. It's really hard. And so one of the dichotomies that I think we have seen consistently over and over again is, am I a little bit too much of this and not enough of that? Or are you a little bit too much of this and not enough of that? And so this episode, y'all, we're gonna be talking about Two X for Y or two Y for X. Get into it. Get into it. So I have always said to you, Kashana, my love, my heart of heart, one challenge is that you are too uptown for the downtown and too downtown for the uptown. I think I'm just ready to take okay, a sip already. Okay, well, just already. go ahead on and let me go and break it down as I Y'all, I had to, I had to put a little you. sip. I had to put because she's about to read me fulfilled. Uh, as I have shared with you, here's a challenge. I mean, master's degree at the good 23 from top university in the country. This is true. On with the six-figure job at 25. This building is true. Building the brand, building the business. Top notch. I mean, taste, taste level, Woo! intelligence. What? Wait a minute. I mean. Talk about me. In a way that is disconcerting if someone is not um, kind of walking alongside, right? So yeah. that's a real uptown vibe. It's uptown in your style. It's uptown in your taste, in your choice. If we're going to go to the concert, if I'm looking at the jumbotron, I could have stayed at home. I mean, this is, is a, a fact. vibe. This it's is a, a fact. Whole, it's a fact, but it's also a vibe because there's other people who are in the nosebleeds and are happy as clams. I am not them. So back to the uptown. <laughs> So as aforementioned, we're on the uptown portion of the program. Yes, there Excellent. We are. So that is wonderful. So then here is an uptown gentleman. He's got his MBA. He's Ooh, an attorney. Or, Hello. Or he is, you know, the the shiner. superintendent. He's all he's. You said he's a shiner. He, he, he's a shiny. <laughs> as as we say, he's a shiny he's penny. A shiny penny. So excellent. And so now you are. He says, Kashana, you know, like. What restaurant are we going to just drop by before we go oh, to the concert? And you're like, I'm open. And you're like, how do you feel about the Cheesecake Factory? That's how. Pause. Right. Listen, first of all, first of all, look, oh, here we are. This is what the gentlemen do. See? This is yeah, what the gentlemen do. Find a way this this is what we're going to find a way. Just get in where you fit in. Ladies all and right. gentlemen, friends and others, listen, introducing Chanel, the one who is blocking me from dating. I mean... <laughs> Another, another episode. Another episode we'll talk about you. Anyway, so yeah. So, so, so now he's disconcerted. He's discombobulated. He didn't know what to do with himself. Because you are at home, at root, also a Queens Jamaican girl. And you don't need all the bells and whistles every single day. Not every, every day. Every single time. But they get it wrong. They get it wrong. That so so the uptown man now is not sure, right? He now is not he doesn't vibe with the downtown. He doesn't have Timberlands potentially. <laughs> and, First of all, who doesn't I mean, I mean Right, and, and like yet, who doesn't have yet, Like, And yet, it's a realness. So, okay, fine. We're like, okay, well, forget about it then. I love music. I love to get down. I love to dance. I love a, a yeah. neighborhood bar. I'm a, a simple girl from a simple city, and let's go find downtown. 
And then, oh Lord, this is where it gets goes. We're with downtown, and downtown now maybe doesn't feel as confident. He maybe doesn't feel the same financially. He doesn't feel like he's in his backyard. He feels that the way you speak, the way you show up, the things that, um, the way you show you value yeah. yourself become a little bit um, oppressive or intimidating unintentionally for you and him. And him. So now, I'm too uptown and I'm too downtown. What is it that we are going to do about this? I feel like that's where I get stuck, right? Because I think that, you know, I wondered, particularly because I have a lot of really great guy friends, like, why am I still single? Like, I literally am, like, sniffing my underarms. Like, is there child, something happening with child. me? Am I giving off the fear of, like, stay away? Hmm. But I think this point about up to uptown for downtown and to downtown for uptown is something that a lot of women face, right? Where we are, uh, particularly black women, like, we are focused on our education, on our career, because that is what has been drilled into our brains, at least in our generation, that we need to aspire to do. And so we do it. And then you look up and you're like, but, but where, where is the gentleman that is supposed to also have done that? Do they even want to? Like, what is happening? And so you try to be like, listen, I am multifaceted. I can be relaxed. I can go to the backyard barbecue and the bashment. And I can also go to the Met. And why aren't you excited about a woman who could do those things? And so I find that, like, when dudes are more like, lack of a better word, upper echelon, because we're not going to talk about these high... We're not doing that. We're not even getting to the eight, the high... that. Nope. No, mm -hmm. no, no, I can't even say it out of my mouth. I can't even say it out of my mouth, y'all. Mm -mm. Don't take a turn. When you take... When looking at dudes who may have more of the accoutrements, or they may have more of the accolades and the check boxes that we are taught that we want, right, and are pretty attractive, they may not be as excited about the other parts that are more down home because maybe it reminds them of a place that they are trying to get away from. That's one thing I've thought about. And then when I'm thinking about dudes who are just like, yo, I'm a roundaway dude. You know how it comes out? I'm a simple dude. Y'all heard it before? Mm -hmm. I'm a simple, I'm, you know, I'm just a I'm simple laid man. Back. I'm, I'm laid, laid back. back. Yeah, I'm I just want y'all to know, gentlemen, and when you say that you lay back, we hear I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. just, just real That's clear. Right. That's right. When you say, I don't want no drama, we're like, Drama follows you like a wet blankie, okay? <laughs> so just be clear about what that is. So I struggle with that, and I wonder, like, how do you find your way to that medium? And you've talked to me a lot about the fact that it could be a cultural difference that sort of adds a layer onto that. So talk to me about that, because we've talked about the fact that, like, I'm West Indian. I identify as a Caribbean woman. I'm first-generation American. I didn't even realize I was really American until so I went to college. And I was like, what you mean? I mean, <laughs> passport notwithstanding, y'all. Like, whoop. Right? And so how does that play out, you think, sort of like in the dating mix for many of us who may have some other sort of, you know, ex life experience relative to being um, I'm black American? Um, I think I, I feel salient to me. You know, it feels like part of the challenge is in, in your downtown mm -hmm. and in the downtown and in the fact that the that you would not be embarrassed for uh, a, what we might call a worker man, because yeah. that's a that's a, a value. Having a hardworking man is a value, is a value. in Afro-Caribbean cultures. American, less so. Used to be. Used to be. But when did it shifted? I mean, it's a lot shifted when industrialization came. I don't want to walk out, but you know, <laughs> when, when we when we moved into the offices, we moved into valuing what happens in the office, yeah. overvaluing, yeah. overvaluing it. And so it's a tension. And you know, I think about myself to profess for the working man and to, to... regular for the profesh, because that is my, that's one of my challenges is that, you know, I've done a lot of education, I'm in education, yeah. I sort of sound like that, I sort of show up that way. That's awesome, and I'm proud of that, I'm proud of myself. That's right. And, and that's a, a beautiful thing, I make good money, and it's all good. And, I am not a shiny penny person. I, th you know this is Glam Squad oh down God, to the so ground. Good, yeah. It's so good, y'all. It's a meanwhile, special like, occasion. I woke up like this. That's correct. And meanwhile, I'm like, like, special this. occasion time. <laughs> Two times a year. See y'all again on the, on the show in six months. Um, and so... I, that, that's not the life I lead. I don't go to the mayor's gala, right? Right. But that's where the, ostensibly, the men whom I might date might be, right? right. And so that's not me. I'm a regular chick regular who likes person. TV shows and who likes, you know, comic books and yep. a little bit of a blurred, a black yep. nerd. And when I get to that group where I'm like, here yes, I am, my let's people. do it. He's like, why you talk like that? And I'm like, oh, oh how, how did we get, get here? here? Yes, this is exactly what happens. And it's it's and it puts us in such like, you know, I would say a quagmire, right? And it really puts us in this funky place where 
you sort of start having like an identity crisis. Because you're like, what, who am I? It's, it's already enough that in our academic pursuits and in our professional lives, we have to show different kaleidoscopes of ourselves. We, we constantly click in the kaleidoscope so that people get a little flavor, right? I don't believe in code switching, y'all. I just want to let you know. Different different episode, different day. Right, because I'm here for it, and I've taught it in my whole career. So <laughs> see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow on the next mm-hmm. episode, right. But like we show different facets of ourselves already consciously and actively in different areas of our life. So to have, now have to come into our love relationships where that's the place where many of us just want to relax and we just want to be. This whole idea about being soft, like to me, it's a wild concept to even get into because it it gives the idea that we woke up wanting to put on the Trojan armor and be a part of the 300 and go out there to date, to find a, to find a person. Absolutely not. But if you can't ever really figure out your place, then you, then you do armor up because you got to be ready for anything. But it's reciprocal also, and I think that our men are in a real bind. I think that if it's something that I would change potentially, I don't know about the internet. Like, (laughs) on the one hand, I love the internet. It is advanced education. It has democratized information. Yes. Yes. And it has created the condition for, I think, for men to really struggle to find out what's true, what's true for themselves, what is okay, what is masculinity, what is manhood. Yeah. It has introduced a, a con- like sort of colluding yeah. of a certain idea. Definitely. And it's make it very it makes it very hard for them as well. So if we're talking about how to show up, how does he show up as a man? That's right. What does it mean if I'm an uptown man, what kind of woman am I supposed, supposed to, to have on my arm? Woo! Uh, and back to my quandary and dilemma, he's supposed to have the Real Housewives chick because that's what somebody told him that's what he's supposed to have. And that's the struggle bus for me. I don't want it. I am not it. And so that's that's a real tension for him, too, because he has to be able to figure out how am I going to be proud and how do I maybe have to defend myself? Right. Are, are the men in my peer group going to look at my wife differently because she's the only one who got the kitten heels on and everybody else got the stilettos? Because that's just because you have direct access to the Lord. You know, I like mean, when you have on the kitten heels, that's, you know, that, you know that's, the main the line. Line. that's the main line. That's the main line, line to the Lord. The you know, line. that's definitely the main line to the Lord. Um, and so I, I just want to acknowledge that part of that the tension is not that men are constant and we are up or down. Right. We are up or down trying to figure out uptown, downtown, while they're trying to figure out what is man, what is pride, what is masculinity, what is, what is my station. What is my station. What is my what is my peer group? What is the expectation? Mm-hmm. And so I you know, it, it's 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 a quandary. It's a quandary. And I think what ends up happening is that then it's like it becomes a us against them. Right. Look. And so the challenge that I find, so, and we'll talk more about this, it's like, like sort of culturally. So my, when my mom jumps in, it's going to be interesting, right? So I grew up in a West Indian household. I'm Jamaican. Um, my dad is Jamaican. My mother is Jamaican. My stepfather, may he rest in peace, is Jamaican. My stepmother's Puerto Rican. So you have that Afro-Caribbean all the way around. I have a huge family on both sides. And so there's a constant infusion of what is culturally correct. And one of the things that I, at my big age, still can't let go of is men need to have a purpose. Hello. My mother and my stepmother and all eight of my aunts on my dad's side and my auntie and my mom's side, like every single woman and man in my family would say, if he doesn't have a purpose, why are you here? Exactly. And so I didn't even think that was a thing. So I'm coming in with my like, I love, listen. Take me to City Island, mm, to mm, Tony's mm, for some lobster. Mm, Hello? Yeah. Ship it to the crib, y'all, okay? <laughs> also, I'm happy to go eat shishi food someplace else because I remember when I was um, probably about 18, I had an older boyfriend. Mom, you remember Courtney? Yeah. I had an older boyfriend. He was in his 20s. And he said to me, don't you ever be impressed by a man taking you to eat. Mm-hmm. Because where he eats, you eat. Mm-hmm. So if he's eating filet mignon, you're eating filet mignon. And if he's at the Olive Garden, you're at the Olive Garden. So it's not impressive. Hmm. And that was one of the things that stuck to me. So the reason to me that goes together with purpose is because he was really clear about what his position is, to your point, as a man. Hmm. Now, this was in the year of our Lord, 1999, so the internet was brand new. So to Hmm. your point, right? But when I think about, like, purpose, I really get frustrated because I'm like, so you don't know how to do nothing. You don't know how to do nothing. You don't know how to fix nothing. You don't know how to call anybody for nothing. You don't think that you're supposed to do that thing. You're not opening doors. You're not. What are you doing? Yeah. It immediately goes to what 
is your purpose. If I have to do all of the things that I'm doing on my own without you and you're here and I still got to do it, why are you here? And it's so funny when you said purpose, we're both Christian. Yep. So I went to, you know, purpose driven life, purpose in our Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Right. But as you spooled it out for me, I was like, ah, this is but one way in which being an African American and the African American experience is, I think, a little different. Okay. Because purpose, it typically translates to job. And so people would say, I have a purpose, I pursued, and I am now a fill in the blank. I'm an attorney, I'm an electrician, I'm a whatever. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose. The purpose is the work, right? Because this is the industrialized society that is not backed by a culture, right? Right. So purpose is I'm contributing to the household. But for you, purpose is the purpose of how do you get stuff done in our lives and mm -hmm. how do I get, st get stuff done in our lives. Absolutely. It's a, and it's a disconnect because I'm going to tell you, Friends, uh -oh. PSA, hey, gentlemen. Wait please, a minute, let me. Gentlemen, please continue. Please continue to learn how to drive, and not just automatic, but a manual vehicle. A manual vehicle. It's awkward, gentlemen. It's awkward when I can drive us away from the situation and you cannot. But that that goes in what you're calling purpose. I think that that is very much the sort of working class maker ethos. Oh, that's my working that, class yeah, thing. That, a, that is it's very a, it's a working class yeah. ethos of America. That's the the language. Ah, mm -hmm. And so now I'm uptown. Back to the gentleman. I'm profesh. Now I pay people to do that. Now you as a man are proud to say I pay people to do my stuff. And that's very American. That's very regular and real. You as a Caribbean woman say. So you say you pay everybody to put the furniture together. That means you are not able to help me with my furniture getting together. Now, I am paying someone. Are we both sitting on the couch as the gentleman puts together the Ikea? <laughs> That's exactly right. Question, mark? question mark. And so it's, it's yeah. a, it, it is a piece to be navigated interculturally in that regard because yeah. there used to be real pride in, in the pre-industrial, I think, across all the people. But, but it, today, that is, is still a cultural value across lots of ethnic people. Yeah. American, less so to me. Uh, and that's just an American thing that we as African Americans are under the umbrella of. There's not as much pride in being able to do your own stuff. If you can pay to have somebody do all your stuff. Then you're like, I've made it. I have the disposable income to be able to do stuff. So I think that, you know, you brought up something really interesting about value and purpose and how it sort of like shifts culturally. So to me, when I think about like, what is your purpose? I'm literally like, what is your value? Like, what are you contributing? to this life because I think there are a lot of men who whether they articulate it or not will have some version of they want to be head of household they want to be the leaders I think they would choose respect over love and for me how I see respect is you have to earn it you have to really live in it and part of the ways that you earn it for me is handling business mm -hmm. the less things that I have to manage and take care of the more things that are on your plate that I don't have to worry about, the higher my respect is for your position as a man. And it, is, it introduces the ease that I'll be able to say, what you need me to do? Hey, what soft, you want? Soft they as a introduce feather. soft as a feather. Mm -hmm. what, can what can I do for Hello? What can I do for you? And yet uh -oh. the American ethos would say, man has had a household, you do all the household and I do all the manning. Only that paradigm is outdated because I also work. Correct. I also parent as for yourself. And so the paradigm is is outdated and does not work before we add the nuance of intercultural. Yeah. Our own paradigm does not work. We now work. You want to make sure that you have someone who is a partner with you in the laundry. That's right. Don't let it sit there. That's right. Y'all. The laundry go do it. You work from home and I'm on the road and I come back and the laundry's still there. That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. It's hard. hard. And at the same time, American culture says that is proper that's what it means that those are the delineated roles only it does not work it doesn't work in real life the math don't math, the math don't but math. we haven't figured out because the society keeps getting reified by back to my social you know kind of social media yes, the media exactly, piece exactly. And, you know we keep reifying the old stuff and, and we don't have a new way so you know i wonder how are we going to be able to sort of navigate past and who and how are we going to compromise because you're going to have to pick up the laundry maybe and maybe i'm going to have to cook when i am tired and coming back but what are how are we going to trade it off right. and how do we get enough of the beginning stuff so it's not red flag swipe so that we can really get into the conversation that's what i miss about Ms. dawn's generation we get married and then we figure it out correct it's no such thing as oh two years in this this is uh, 
Yeah. Keep working Keep on working it. it. Right. Keep working Keep on working it. On the it. expectation. And I don't want to take it all the way back to where it was abusive and where you right. did, you couldn't right. escape. Right. But there's an aspect to one of your shows where they have to get married and then <laughs> and they, they have, have to, to like, live together for eight weeks. Come out. on, married at first sight. You and, know, and, that's my jam. And figure it out and you can't swipe left and you can't be looking for this perfect unicorn that is cobbled together from different Correct. images and stories and, and shows that you saw on TV and what your man's married. And so, you know, I, I wonder how are we going to be able to kind of get to that investment up front that will give us the time to find the give and take because this the society is not going to set us up to like meet cute no, no. Not, not at all and so i'm wondering like how do we convey to men um if that's your jam how do you convey to your person um that you have this flavor how do you give them enough input yes um and enough like window so that they can kind of experience those things without scaring them off mm -hmm. Because I think that that is part of the challenge. So here's something that, quick, y'all, can y'all stop saying this to women who run things? All right, boss lady. We don't like it. We it is like a panty-drying experience. Don't we don't want it. Okay. L let's talk about vaginal dryness. <laughs> we don't want it. Mm, Look, no, we don't want it. We don't want it. Right? It's like, oh. this is like, no, this is, this is a thing that, like, it does not turn us on. We actually know and have experienced, and I wish we could do studies. Mm. That will show from the moment you say, boss lady, oh, you a CEO? Okay, boss lady. Mm -hmm. There is a rapidly declining mudslide mm -hmm. to you being resentful around where I am in life and an uptick in trying to show me that you're in charge or that you're in control. And so I wonder how we're able to give pieces of ourselves without feeling like we're hiding so that there's an opportunity for somebody to get to know that. Yes, I, I think it's challenging. And I, I really want folks to hear, if then, it's not all men. Right. We're saying the man who would say, boss lady, is presenting a certain point of view. Correct. And, and it's tr it's troubling for us. This is what we, it's what I want to make sure that's yeah. coming across. It's not all men don't do this. Correct. It's like, if that is your if then, just know that it might be, it might trigger this other side and, and you don't know. So, so PSA is on. Yeah. Just so you know, boss lady is a uh, sort of blinking phrase. Um, along with like protect my peace. Oh my gosh, along which to us means shut the fuck up. Mm. I just want y'all to know. Mm. Like that's what it means. That's what we hear. That's what we understand. So, okay. And and, and if that's if that's the the hill you want to die on, excellent, sure. excellent. But just know that it's not to, it's not the flex you think it is. Correct is what I'd like to say. So I feel like. I don't know the answer. I am not dating. The reason I am not dating is I have not figured out the next right way to date. I was one of the early adopters of the good online dating yeah. in the, the year of our Lord, 1998. Yes. Black voices and black Oh planet my gosh, and black ICQ. planet and ICQ. Come Listen, you taking it you back better, now. You better try and understand my, We trying to get my mother on, on our time. We gonna talk you, about okay. that. Listen, so, okay. no, no. Look, yeah. <laughs> Look uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get her on our time. Oh my God. So, I, you know, I have been on that journey. I've lived in six states. I've moved a ton of times and so like, Online dating has always been a primary way that I have been able to meet people. That's right. Here lately, I've been in a younger social scene um, and a, a younger um, set of men. And so that was an adventure that yeah, I, yeah. I think was not quite right for me. And now I'm at an age where kids is not really a thing. So if kids are not really a thing, um, not that he can't have kids. I, I will not be the birth of the baby at 48. So we're now at a place where, what does the next frontier of dating look like for myself? So That's I am right. not dating right now until I can figure out the right entry point in the right way. And so I don't know the answer to, how do we buy ourselves enough time, click the kaleidoscope through, yep. where we don't swipe off him. I, one reason I had to get off online dating is I become too superficially judgmental. Ah, uh, because you're looking for reasons to opt out. That's correct. And, and looking for the the safety, right? Yeah. It, it feels risky to date, yep. generally. Yep. So I feel safe if I reject everything that's yep. ever been wrong. Only that's, that's right. that, we're all human. You're not about to get no 10 out of 10. At so all. So if you swipe on the dude, sunglasses, uh, oh my gosh! You know how I feel. About oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. So the sunglasses stand, is one. Standing in front of the car, swipe. You know, you know, stand in, take a selfie in front of, in the bathroom, and I, that's it. In a group picture <laughs> where you don't identify yourself, swipe like the, just like all the things. Swipe, 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 swipe. That's not productive. It's not helpful. So I'm not sure the right entry point. I do think that one of the things that we have to be able to do is to share more about the emotional. When I hear that, I feel, you mm -hmm. know, I would like to share with you that 
that was hard to hear. And let me say why. A lot of times we will assert mm -hmm. what it is or what it was or what it will be. Um, but the, it's not just the I statement like we learned in our work. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but it is really trying to soften and show you can affect me. And I think we have, we as, as strong black women might have trouble being like, you can affect me early. Early. Oh, I will cut and run. Right? You like, know, you know ah. I, listen, I'm not a runaway bride, but I am a runaway dater. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, oh, what you said? Gotta go. Mm -hmm. Huh? You don't have a who? Gotta run. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, huh? You said, immediately. immediately. I got to go. I got to go. So I have to and also have learn to buy, that. Yeah, we have to buy the time, right? Yeah. We've got to buy the time. Now, what does the gentleman need to do? So ah. if we need, to, if we need to, to make sure that we are putting ourselves out there vulnerably and emotionally yes. to say, you can affect me. You have power in this relationship from week one, which yep. is very scary feeling, but maybe helps us buy time. What might our dating counterparts be able to do to buy time from the male perspective specifically, since we are both straight, um, uh, so that he's coming to the table and buys us the time? Yes. What, what do you want to see? I think I want to see more men operate from a posture of positivity and hope. The thing that I see a lot, what'd you say? And be more assertive. And be more assertive. Okay, so those are two different things. Mm -hmm. So operating from a place of position of hope for me is a lot of the dating profiles that I read and then a lot of the men that I end up meeting out when I'm on stage or in the work or whatever can tell you all the things they don't want. Very clearly, very exact thing. I don't want no drama. Sorry, I hate to break it to you, but you know, drama in your blanket, here we are again. You know, I will make your life better, not easier. Correct. I will make your life better, not easier. And I've had to say that to folks like, you're going to be a better man, but our relationship may not make it. <laughs> and that goes back to the cultural aspect of I grew up in a family and in a culture, I think more broadly, in my church family, in my school, like all of that stuff was very largely West Indian and West African, where it's not a problem to tell a man a thing. You're not doing this is not a, an indictment of your manhood. It is a uh, pointing out of the thing I need you to do differently. And men, and the correction, loving correction, right? And the tone of my voice does not mean I love you less. And the sharpness of my words does not mean that you did it wrong or right. I'm just narrating what needs to happen and I'm gonna just expect you to go get it done, right? And I've had to figure out how to soften that a little bit. But on the inside, my stomach hurts because I still feel what I feel. I, that has not changed. I'm sorry, y'all. I still be feeling that. I talk all, bad about y'all in my brain. So I'm thinking like, come to the table, come to the, the, the conversation with positive things. I'm looking for somebody who's going to make me smile. I'm looking for something that I want to make yeah. smile. I'm looking for somebody who I'm excited to see, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to, you're not trying to get married, are you? On the first week. Really, my dude? For real. For real, right? Or wanted to be booed up on week one. Um, I just met you like what was can we just can we actually go out? We've never met, you know, so I think that there's um, really shifting the way that men are coming into the space and into space in their own minds. I think is one thing. And I know that lots of guys just like we have have had really crappy experiences because there's a small slice of the population of our contemporaries that are really out here being out here. Fine. I think the other thing is really understanding your knowing your audience. And one of the things that you and I have talked a lot about is that I think that there are a lot of men who um, fight above their, they punch above their fighting weight, right? And to me, that means like, bruh, if you know you work an hourly job and you know you figuring it out trying to make your rent and you know that you still got to give whatever little you have to your mother or you still trying to find your way in the world and you're putting it together to save for the car, for the thing of that, you don't need to date a woman who has a multiple six-figure job. Like, you literally do not need to. You know why? Because as a man... His Correct. Yeah. And also, I need you to walk into So you said this to me. We want you to be successful. We want you to be successful. Yes. And so what I'm saying is not that you're not good enough. What I'm saying is that you're not putting yourself in a situation to be successful. And there are women for whom you having an hourly job, you finding a way or making one, you still do hobbling it together. It's just fine because they are too. And they understand and they can meet you where you are. But when you try to reach for something on a high shelf that you can't reach without a step ladder, you just tippy toeing, then things topple. And I think that that's the thing that I would, I haven't figured out how to say that. I'm saying it now, right? But I haven't figured out how to say it in a way to men early enough that doesn't feel biting. 
and I and this is a point of accountability for us. We too punch above our weight. Yeah, listen, you already we know. I too, listen. This, Hello. This is a, a struggle I have in my own life as a person who had gastric bypass in the past and is you know comfortably at my good size sixteen and living my best life. Like I want to still feel really proud of that gentleman who is with me. I want to be attracted to him. I want to be sexually attracted to him. That's right. And I want him to be really proud of me. And so. It doesn't feel like punching above my weight to have someone of similar size to myself, and yet the gentleman who is husky ex football player, he's yeah, a yeah, good yeah. two fifty, yeah, yeah, he's living, yeah. his, best living life. his best life. He's dating Real Housewives. He is dating the shiniest of pennies mm -hmm. because culture's real different in that regard, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so yeah. it is. It is tough to to find like I want to be attracted to you. I want to date my best friend. I don't want to be in the Lucy and Desi single beds in my bedroom best friends, though. Or like me, having to drink two shots of bourbon Child. before every interaction. Child, tall, call a thing a thing. So, so I just want to name that. It's not usually on the same dimensions, you know. Right. The, the American society in general sets us up on the financial, and that's one way that we should understand, and in a lot of ways that is where it plays out. Something you said that I wanted to just pick up on. You said we go to uh, um, college and get grad degrees and everything because that is very much what society has socialized us to do. Factual. Also, we do it because we're waiting. Waiting. And while we're waiting, <laughs> let us go and get one more degree and at, right. least be and be working, busy. and at least be working on our career because Correct. we're not married, so we don't get to work on the family potentially. Right. We're not buying the house. You know, Kashana always makes fun of me because I always said. Oh, I, I would not buy a house as a single person. I would buy a condo maybe that I then could like, you know, uh, rent. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But, but it is, like, it's oh intimidating to have a whole house and ask somebody to come to the table similarly. Yeah. So great. So now I haven't bought my house yet and I don't have my kids yet. And so let me go on and just get this degree and make sure my job is progressing. That's one, a, another that's way. Something that's something we really, don't talk about enough. We are waiting. We are, waiting. We are ready. And, and I don't, I'm not saying we're emotionally ready all the time. All works in progress, but from a life standpoint, a lot of times we are advancing our careers because it has not happened for us yet. Yeah. Um, and yet sometimes advancing our career gets in the way. So the, the, the piece I'd like us to be thinking about is how do we bridge to them and how do they bridge to us? For me, I would like to figure out what is the right sweet spot of man where I'm physically attracted to him. Right. It feels um, equitable, and he also is looking at me, me like, and I'm mm, looking over my shoulder like, like, like hey, uh, hey, 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 hey smaller, so shinier, da, 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 <laughs> younger, da, 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 da. and for him, we, I mean, and, and we want, for him, we want him to, how can you, sir, please, please, focus on you, focus on you focus. in such a way that you are, are getting yourself a little bit closer in parity yes. to where we are at the yes. pace that we are at. And Lord knows society is against him in doing it. So Absolutely it's not as easy. Yes. It's not easy for us and it's less easy for him. And this is going to be, you got to find something. I like, you know, my phrase situated self-confidence, yes. situated, situated self-intelligence, which I think for many of us professional women, like that's something that we need, particularly if we are on the nerdier side yes. that we have advanced in our careers and our business lives. Yes. We need to be with people, I think, and this is a broad stroke, y'all, and no shade to the generalists, doctors, lawyers, et cetera, but we need to be with the folks who have specialized careers. So that's your that's everything from your plumber to be clear, mm -hmm. electrician, right. right? All the way to systems all the way up to like the systems administrator mm -hmm. and NASA scientist mm -hmm. that only like one percent of people get to be, mm -hmm. right? Like we need to be with folks who are so good in their specialized area that they are confident and comfortable, not threatened in the rest. Because they're like going to be great, babe. Because mm -hmm. they know the thing that they know we ain't ever gonna know, like. Mm -hmm. But other things, lawyers, da -da, like there's general bodies of knowledge that those of us who are well-read, well-educated, who are curious, who are lifelong learners, just continue to find our way into. And I think that that creates space for discomfort around their confidence. And so that situated confidence thing is really good. Listen, y'all, we could talk about this all, all day night, long. All day and all night. So I want to know what part of this conversation really kind of just like got you right here, made your stomach, mm, got you a little ouch, because we want to make sure that we are talking about the kind of topics, particularly for women of a certain age and our big age mm. that are experiencing. I think that 
um, women and particularly black women in our 40s going into our 50s. And I think actually older women too. Are re Once you hit that 40 age, I think that people forget about our disposable income. People forget about the needs and the health and the life stuff that we have. And so a kiss good night is going to help you talk about and think about all of that. So Ashra, I want to thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. You know, it's always a pleasure to be, yes. here, be with you and your company. And I got to be Shiny Penny tonight, y'all. Come on. I, my this, nails. Come on. Look, now. come on. Look, nails, put your hair done. On, we it. know we in a month of love. So listen, <laughs> yes. so that's what we have to do it. Self-love. Listen. I love it. I'm in love with what? Myself. Myself. Okay. And that took a while, y'all, to get there. Okay. This is a journey, a work in process. And we'll talk about it more. Thank y'all for hanging out with us. Don't forget to like subscribe, share this with your friends, drop it on your Facebook page, grab a piece and put it on your TikTok, but make sure that you keep it locked to a kiss. Good night.